Most important thing is you got to be able to drive the ball first. You got to be able to go to the basket. The defender has to understand that that's a potential threat. When you catch it, now you turn and face. It's important to see where the defender is because you see how now I can keep the ball here. I'm not going to go in a typical triple threat position when the defender's hands are already here. So, you know, from here you have to be comfortably able to shoot the ball from this pocket, from here, or from here. So in this situation, I read the defender. Now I'm jabbing. Now I back him up, right? So now. Once I go for that next jab step, I can catch him off rhythm. I like to elevate straight from this position right here. So I don't even bring my foot back. You know, you keep the defender off balance where you just elevate straight from this position, which is a tougher shot. You know, the more you do the shot, the more you work at it, you know, the more comfortable you become and the stronger you become in areas where you need to be strong. I'd really just get out there on the court and just do it over and over and over until you get comfortable with it. That's the Mamba way. Defensive players that are long and athletic and jump extremely high. Fadeaway is not going to get you away further enough. Their length is so great that they can still alter your shot. Now you throw in the pump fake, it really keeps the defender off balance and keeps them guessing, which is exactly what you want to do. The trajectory on the shot changes depending on the defender. You know, I, I like to raise my elbow up a little bit more. I can read if a defender's coming. Now I got to kind of slide back a little bit more and shoot the ball straight up. That shot goes in because you're out there on the court just kind of working on those things. So you gotta be able to work on those things, be comfortable in those situations so that you're natural when it happens. I'm comfortable with the backboard. When I shoot a fadeaway, for example, when I go into my shot, you know, I'm always feeling where the defense is first and foremost. So sometimes, you know, it might require me to fade back this way for a shot. If the defender's more on my shooting arm, it requires a different footwork where I'm kind of leaning this way. But I'm always looking at the backboard and looking at where I'm going to be positioning the ball. You know, some guys like watching the flight of the ball. I don't like doing that. I like watching where my target is and focusing on that target. I think kids really have to get comfortable with the backboard by just kind of going underneath the basket, spinning the ball off the glass, try different shots and be comfortable with right hand or left hand. And, you know, all those things are do. Footwork really sets up your shot. It enables you to keep defenders off balance. I'd say mix up the rhythm of your footwork. That's very important as well. If you're out there just doing the same footwork with the same rhythm, same tempo, defenders get used to that and uh, can kind of sit on your moves. You know, the degrees in which you fade depends on the, the defender that's guarding you. You know, if the defender's on my left side a little bit, I have to change how I fade because now from this angle, if I fade straight back, you can really contest that shot. So a lot of times I'll fade this way. So I'll create more separation between us. I might even draw a foul on my off arm, be able to knock the basket, still make the shot. So if you're out there practicing and working on your fadeaway, I'd say, you know, work on fading straight back, work on fading to the side, Work on finding something in between, and, and you got to be able to find that rhythm. And it takes a lot of effort. There's a lot of legs involved, as in anything. You got to do the repetition. I've taken you through getting the cushion, creating space, raising up and shooting shot. So that's the threat that you have. Now you have a perimeter jump shot, you're a threat from the perimeter, you're a threat from the outside. He has to honor that. When that's a threat, now you can drive by and get all the way to the hoop. You can finish on a big, you can finish with contact. So those are the two threats you have working for you. Now, to really be a deadly offensive player, you need the third one, which is a mid-range game. I take the defender here, I know he's worried about my shot. No, he's worried about me getting to the hoop. I see the help coming. You gotta dip your shoulder, you gotta go hard. A lot of people make a pull-up jump shot look like this. They go like, yeah, that's not, that's not a threat. That's nothing. The guy can steal the ball that way. So when you make this drive here, you're stopping on this leg and you're using this as your control. A lot of guys try to use this as their control and stop it and they'll wind up being off balance. Now I just elevate straight up in the air and I elevate and I finish over the top of it. But now he really doesn't know what to do as a defender. He doesn't know if I'm going to go all the way to the basket, 
Am I gonna raise up and shoot? Am I gonna stop and pull up? That's the key about the pull up jump shot, is taking them to one spot, and then raise up over the top and shoot over. Establish we can shoot the jumper, drive to the basket, we got a mid-range game. And if it's an athletic defender, especially somebody that likes to block shots, is very active, wants to get after you, you know, it kind of has something to prove. They can use that against him. So you drive him, he thinks he's playing great defense, thinks he's got you now. So the only thing left for him to do to make the highlight is to block the shot. So now you show him the ball and he goes for it. Now there are two different ways of stepping through. A lot of times if, if you know, if I pump fake and I create this space right here, then I'll just step on through right here. A lot of defenders that are very physical. They like to keep their body on you. Even as they go for the pump fake, they like to stay on you here. So now you don't have any room. You get an offensive foul if you try to step through there. So instead of doing that or forcing it, I just use my left pivot and just pirouette around this way. Now I got that space, now I'm free. All I have to do now is look at this big coming here. And if he, if he comes to block the shot, leaves his feet, I can hit my teammate. You know, if, if, I, if I got a clear shot here, nobody's open there, I just float it over the top of him for two. So now I have the ball, triple threat position. He has to respect my jump shot. So whereas the previous play, I create separation, I raise up and shoot. Now he's on top of that because he knows I might raise up and shoot at any moment. I'm knocked down one, two, three shots in a row. So now I'm reading on the weak side and I'm seeing this big is late. So there's a gap behind him that I can penetrate if I take advantage of it. So now the important thing is just to be patient. I know I want to go right. And all this is happening in a split second. So now I'm going to bait him here and use a little semi fake and lean, get him leaning just a little bit. So now I can attack him. If I get by a guy here on the step and I'm going on this angle, once I get down here, I'll try to dip to get this angle going to the rim. In the perfect world, once you get by this guy here, he's already gone. There's nothing he can do to get in the play without fouling. Now I'm seeing this big coming over here and I'm timing it and I'm seeing what's gonna happen. Now either I can dunk the ball, or if I wanna create a foul situation where I know I can get a three point play, I can create a bump and go on the other side, use the rim for protection and lay the ball up and get a three-point play. Whether it's high or lower, whether it's there, whether it's up there, you just want that ball to go in the basket. However you're comfortable getting it in there or spinning it in there,
the first thing I want to do is I want to try to create space. So what I normally like to do is I like to V cut. And I just bring them up here, get my spot, create space, catch. And once I catch, I square up right away. This way I create that cushion, that separation that I need. And it gives me opportunity to read the court, see what's going on behind them. Most of the time I don't concern myself with this guy because I know I can beat this guy. So if he's in front of me, I'm looking behind to see where his help is from. At the same time, he can't see behind him, so he doesn't know what's going on. So I can use anything that I want right here. I can raise up, I can shoot it, I can penetrate. In this particular instance, on my jab step, I'm jabbing just to create space to see what he does, to see if he makes a mistake. If he opens up too much and there's no help behind him, I'm gonna go to the basket. If I jab and he opens up and there's help behind him, I'll just raise up and shoot.